the all clad four slice waffle maker with removable plates. I'm Darno with Wave Oven Recipes. I've got one right here in this box, and so we're going to get it unboxed right now for a full review. All right, so here it is the four slice gourmet waffle maker with removable plates. So I'm going to get it on out of this box now. Alright, so it comes with a little bit of paperwork. The manual doesn't really have a lot to say, so, you know, it's just a waffle maker, so I think that they figure you'll figure it out on your own pretty easily. But it has this little, like, uh, batter catcher that I guess is for overflow batter. You put it in the back here, and there's like a little bit of a, in the back there's a little bit of a, I guess, a slot there and there are these two little notches and you kinda gotta knock a little bit of easy to knock off plastic right here and then this slides right in there real easy like that it just kinda just kinda goes right in there and then you can as you're cooking your waffles if there's any overflow it'll flow over into the basket there also I wanted to show the power cord is a three prong grounded power cord and although this is just a waffle maker it uses 1600 watts of power and I will just to get the warranty stuff out of the way it comes with a two-year limited warranty but when we open up you see that you know you've kind of got the coils for heating and we put in our waffle plates so I'm just going to see if I can well actually I've got it backwards because you got to have the part that has the spout over here so put it in there like so and once you got a plate in if you wanted to remove a plate there's a button on the side here you just press and the plate just comes right out when you want to remove for cleaning and such so pop that one in and then I'm going to take the other plate here which I believe goes like this actually backwards again <laughs> so it goes like this actually and just put it in the two notches, there are two notches down there and just kind of lock that in just like that there's a button up here to loosen the waffle plate like so so you got your waffle maker fully together there and then you can just you know close up and make your waffles alright so I've got the waffle maker here on my counter I did want to show you this little tab here is for locking it when you flip that tab and you're cooking your waffles it won't open so you can keep things locked nice and tight now I'm going to open up and show you inside that these are very deep grooves in the waffle maker it makes big deep Belgian waffles so like you know maybe like an inch thick or so so you see my measure here one inch so it can make a nice one inch Belgian waffle and anything that you know any mix that gets squeezed excess goes out the back which is really nice I do want to do some quick measuring for you just to give you an idea of the dimensions of this cooker if you do front the back all the way from the little cup to the front in this handle here you get almost 16 inches like just about almost 16 when you go side to side you get about 11 inches maybe just a little under 11 inches one important thing is when you lift this up how high does that go to you know basically nearly the top of my counter you almost can't see but I'm going to basically try and do a measurement for you and when it's up it's about 17 inches up maybe the lid of that handle, maybe a little more than 17, I'd say 17 and a half inches to be safe. You want to have about 17 and a half inches of clearance there. And when we look at the inside here, going inside, side to side, it's 9 inches one way and then the other way here. We've got about 9 inches that way. One of the waffles is going to be 5, well about 5 inches roughly by about another five inches roughly 
just a little under. So those are the dimensions we're dealing with with this cooker. The front controls on this waffle maker are pretty basic. It's got a power light and ready button. I've already plugged it in by the way and basically just turn the knob to power it up. It will light up when it's ready and we can put our waffle mix in there and make some waffles. So let's get started making some waffles. Alright, so to make our waffles, I'm going to turn the waffle maker to just one pass medium because I like mine just a little crisp. And the ingredients that I'm using for this waffle or these waffles that I'm making because this is a four slice waffle maker, I've got some official Waffle House waffle mix. And you can get this online if you're interested in getting some of it for yourself. It calls for mixture of ingredients and I do it a little differently from their recommendations just a slight bit because I found it works out better but I've got two cups of half and half here and one large egg and I've got two cups of the waffle mix their recommended recipe calls for a little less I found that putting a little more in gives you a nice thicker fluffier waffle and so it turns out real nice but I'm taking this one large egg and just basically mixing it up so that it's nicely stirred and I'm going to pour in my half and half in the egg as well into the mix and get those mixed up. So got my half and half in and now I'm going to get that mixed up egg in there. And now that those are in, I'm going to just go ahead, sorry about that clanging there, go ahead and start mixing up my waffle batter and we'll let the waffle maker continue to warm up. As I'm mixing this, it's a little it's a little thin to start, but it does kind of thicken up a little bit as you mix the batter in with the half and half. So you just kind of have to keep mixing it, and the uh, mix will start absorbing the fluid. It starts kind of expanding onto the fluid, which is kind of nice to make your thicker waffle. Especially if we just kind of let it set for a moment after mixing it. it. It even starts to kind of start making kind of gobs in there that you have to kind of work out if you let it set too long. But I found this to be a great waffle mix. I mean, it's like the family favorite in this house. It is the family favorite waffle mix to use to make waffles better than other recipes and mixes because I mean it's Waffle House and if you've been to Waffle House then hey maybe you understand <laughs> and personally I like these waffles from the homemade mix that I'm able to customize the mix myself from to be a little better than the ones in the restaurant because I'm able to customize the mix the way that I really want it to be the way I really want my waffles to be and get my perfect mix Now the waffle maker is still heating up, but while it's been heating up, you see that the waffle mix has thickened up as it's just sat here waiting for the waffle maker. It has already thickened up a bit and it's not as loose as it was when we started. So you want to let this waffle mix kind of, you know, get a thicker consistency to it so that you're sure that the mix is absorbed in all of the fluids very well. Alright, it just finished heating and I'm just making sure that my waffle mix is nicely stirred. I do want to point out nothing in this video is sponsored. Nobody gave me anything in this video. Purchased it all with my own money. And so opening up the waffle maker, I'm going to test temperature with this heat gun. It's saying things are in the 460, 470 range. So it's very hot. Very hot. And so going to pour my waffle batter in try and get some all over all of the plates and it might consume all my waffle mix just getting it in because this is such a big deep waffle maker I'm gonna pretty much pretty much use up my waffle mix here so I've pretty well consumed my waffle mix going to have pretty much exhausted my waffle mix I should say and 
going to close up and as I close I'm spewing out and it's actually not just spewing out the backs for me it's spewing out all over and I'm noticing that you know not only is it spewing out all over because I guess the hook is getting kind of clogged up with mix so I overfilled it which is uh, you know I guess not good but it doesn't compensate for overfilling things very well and I've got mix not just spilling out the back I've got mix spilling out of all the sides I've got mix falling everywhere as I'm you know trying to press in here to get things closed it won't close because once I try to close up it suddenly won't close too well so that's something interesting going on here as we try and oh there we go now I, I think it closed but I don't think it locked I think we got it closed but not locked so now it's basically saying that you know the light went out it realizes there's mix in there I guess and it's trying to make my waffle but I can't close it to lock it I can't get it locked so you have to make sure that you I guess put in not too much mix or it's going to overflow I do know there are other waffle makers that try and compensate for overflow on the sides I was thinking initially with this one having the cup in the back that it would all spew out the back and maybe be able to catch it all but it's catching some you can see it's catching some but it's definitely you know we have definitely got an overflow all over the place here it didn't just go out the back so that's something to keep in mind I forgot to mention with this lever that I'm trying to slide over that lever is a bit hot that lever is hot so I'm trying to slide it but it's hot so there's something to keep in mind there also with this lever that it's going to get hot now I don't know if this waffle maker is going to eventually just tell me hey your waffles are ready and you can pull them out I think it should but I wasn't able to lock in to lock it up like you should so I think under conditions where I could lock in it probably would appropriately tell you when you're done I'm going to just do a peek no it's not definitely not done yet so I'm definitely going to try and press down and still can't lock it in and it's pretty hot even though this is a reflective surface I'm still going to try the heat gun anyway and it says that the surface well it's saying 102 104 but I think that's probably a bad it's definitely not it's definitely hotter than that you know reflective surfaces the heat guns not going to give you a perfect read anyway so in this case it's definitely off because from what I'm feeling with my hand definitely hotter than 102 from what I'm feeling by the touch in my opinion so it gets pretty hot this tab is so hot I really can't I really can't touch it anymore it may be waiting for that tab to be locked to even determine well you can see my waffle is not done I'm gonna have some uh, I guess you could say messed up waffles tonight <laughs> But we're going to continue to try and see what we can do to cook these and get them off. Alright, I think I got it locked in just now. I think just holding it continually to try and press it, I got it locked. Yeah, it's locked in finally. Alright, so our waffles seem to finally be done cooking you have to be careful hitting that tab because it's piping hot all right so I guess it is non-stick once your waffles actually cook it just takes a while and I guess the slightly higher than medium gives us a slightly darker than uh, middle of the road type of waffle there so this is a pretty interesting outcome that we got and some thick waffles Let's see if I can get in here and get my waffles out I'll have to, I'm gonna turn it off so that it stops heating I don't wanna you know overcook my waffles too much but I'm kinda making a mess of this one trying to get it out and I figure if I can if I can get it up maybe it'll help get the others but things are kinda sticky in there See if I can get one out in kind of decent shape. 
No, they're, I think because I split them is the problem. I think because when I opened it up, I basically split it in half by opening too early. So these didn't work out as well as I hoped. And I'm going to just kind of throw these onto a plate. Maybe we'll try again with what I have left of the mix. But yeah, you see they kind of split in the middle because I opened too soon. So you have to keep things closed, of course, like you should with a waffle maker. And it'll cook up your waffles, but there are some things that you've seen here that you need to keep in mind. So, and get the rest of this waffle out. So I've got about a half batch of waffle mix, maybe about a cup left. I'm just going to pour it on into the bowl. And I'll add another egg and I'll add uh, maybe a cup of my half and half to it. Alright, so I've got myself another egg that I'm whisking up real quick. And I've got my one cup of half and half. Need to get these uh, didn't turn out so well waffles out the way. Going to turn the waffle maker back on. And I've got it on just two this time. So coming in, you know, see how it does at about half of the half of the heating level that I did last time. And so, sorry about that clang, but going to pour in my half and half. Alright, so it's finished heating up again. Open it up. I'm going to check again the temp. We're reading in the 423, 433, 423 range. So going to pour my mix on in and since I have less mix I know I won't fill it as much as I did last time but I'm just going to stop right there just trying to get them all get all the holes kind of covered but definitely have less mix this time and closing up tight able to lock easily this time so basically you want to use about half of the mix that I used last time and I still you see got stuff still spewing stuff still spewing but we'll just let it go ahead and cook this time and see what we get and with it spewing out the way it has you know you probably just want to use maybe about 75% of this mixture that I cut in half to you know try and get things so that you got waffle being made but not spewing out but this Waffle maker definitely is not handling spillover all over well. That spillway in the back is not catching everything. There's a lot coming through the front and all over the place. So we'll just let it continue to cook. Alright, so our waffle waffles have finished for this run. Gotta unlock it. And See if I can open up. All right. So we see even on number two, things are pretty well done. Now let's see about getting the waffle out or the waffles out. Keep speaking like I'm dealing with a single waffle maker, but we got four whole waffles here. I'm going to try and get these out more gently and try and not uh, not mess them up. It does seem like after it's done cooking, it's, you know, fairly non-stick, but, I mean, it's like non-stick, but at the same time, the waffle kind of adheres into those big grooves, you know. So that kind of causes us to get an imperfect waffle out, trying to lift it out. So, get that out of there. And the last one. Alright, so we do have four waffles now. But even on two setting, they get pretty dark. So, you know, I guess maybe you want to try one if you want to light a waffle. But now I'm going to take one of these waffles and I'm going to plate it. Like so. Oops, sorry. Dropped my spatula there. I'm going to grab some syrup real quick because even though I normally would 
you know, not use condiments and things on stuff that I cook for a taste test. In this case, I am going to put some syrup on my waffle. So let's go ahead and put a little syrup on the waffle, like so here. Just cover my waffle real good. It does make a pretty thick waffle though. You see how thick and large these waffles are? I mean, they are big. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut myself a slice off for our taste testing purposes. And let me move the camera and we'll do our taste test. Alright, so we've got our waffle here. Now I'm going to do some taste testing. Now I will say, the waffle it has a crunchy exterior but the inside is very soft and moist. So it's not like the whole waffle is like overcooked and burnt inside or anything. It's very soft and moist inside but it has that crunchy exterior. So it's a nice brief crunch and then the rest is all soft. And so that's pretty good. So it, eventually, you know, you get it right and you get your final product. It comes out pretty nice. It's just a matter of getting things right for this waffle maker. And, you know, with any type of cooker, you might have a bit of a learning curve learning it. With this waffle maker, as long as you don't overfill it too much, and you're able to close it up, seal it, and wait, things turn out decent. And you can, you know, lower it down even more if you want it even lighter than that. You just don't want to overfill it because it doesn't compensate well for the overfilling when you, you know, put too much in. But overall, you know, it is able to knock out the waffles, and it is able to turn out a nice big waffle. So, or nice big waffles four at the same time. So, if you're cooking for a family, it's, an, you know, decent enough to get your job done. But anyway, definitely looking forward to your comments. You can find referral links and other ways to help this channel in the video description. The referral links give a commission that help the channel without you paying anything extra. Also, if you want to see other recipes for different types of cookers, check out my blog, superwaveovenrecipes.com. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at waveovenrecipes. You can always come to this YouTube channel by going to waveovenrecipes.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and good eating.